This video is going to cover my experience as an engineering intern, what I went through, my salary, how I got the job, and so on. So let's begin. My first and only internship I got after my third year in college. It was for the entire summer and it consisted of a summer long project. Many of my friends who've gotten internships have had a summer long project as well, but I can't say this is true for everyone. My project was to begin the process of making a handheld printer. Basically a device that you could hold in your hand and move over paper and it will print out whatever you need. I had to work with an Arduino, which I've talked about in a lot of other videos, but essentially this can read in voltages and output voltages in response to certain things based on what you program. I had to use an optical sensor like the ones your computer mouse uses to read changes in position and it looked very similar to this. I'd use an ink cartridge and some circuitry that connected to the Arduino, which looked kind of like this, and it allowed the Arduino to communicate with the ink cartridge so it knows when to print something. Now this project had no quote answer key. This is not something every intern does. It's something that the company wanted to try making, so it was up to me to figure out stuff on my own, but of course I could ask for help. So one of the first things I had to check was the accuracy of the sensor. As the sensor moved over a surface, it fed information to the computer about how far it's moved in the x and y direction, and it gave this information very quickly, like it might give data every few milliseconds about its change in position from the last time it determined position. But how do we test how accurate this is? Well, the good news is the company worked with printers, which have to be extremely accurate. For an inkjet printer, as the cartridge moves, there's actually a lot of data on position of the cartridge being sent through the machine so it can print what you need very accurately. We as consumers don't need that information, of course, but at the company, I was able to plug in the printer into the computer and access that information. I was also able to control how the carriage that moves the ink cartridge would move by the help of a program that they gave me. So what I did was mounted the sensor on the ink carriage that physically moves the ink, then I would tell it to move, let's say, across the printer and back 10 times at a certain speed. Then I would compare the sensor data to the printer data. So the printer data might say after 10 milliseconds, it moved 0.0024 inches. Then after 20 milliseconds, it moved 0.0056 inches, and so on. It would give thousands of data points over the course of a few seconds of it taking the data. Then the Arduino would be collecting sensor data and printing that to the screen. Then I would export both those to Excel, and yes, you will use Excel as an engineer. And then I would make two plots of time versus position for both those sensors as it moved back and forth. And then I would compare them to check for error. I was able to assume the printer data was very accurate because the sensors they use in those are worked on much more and they put in much more money to those. If you're wondering why I didn't just use one of those, it's because we were using cheaper sensors to make this prototype first. So if let's say the sensor data was always like a few fractions of an inch off, that's okay because it's possible to program that in such that it auto-corrects the error. These are the kind of things you have to account for as an engineer because nothing is perfect. This was the first few weeks of the internship. Connecting the sensor to the Arduino actually was not super easy. Then I had to spend a while programming the Arduino so the sensor could take data at the appropriate speeds. I had to figure out how to make the printer move as I wanted it to. I had to take lots of plots and so on. Then once I determined how accurate the sensor was, it was time to try printing something. I connected an ink cartridge to the Arduino and with that I had full control over when it would spit out ink. But this still involved quite a bit of prep work. For example, I had to tell it not to print twice if the device moved over the same spot twice. I did have times where the cartridge was spitting out ink while it shouldn't have been, so it left a huge ink spot on the paper, meaning I had an issue in my program that I had to debug. So yes, it's lots of trial and error. Although towards the end I did get it to print a simple logo and various other things, which I thought was really cool. It wasn't always super legible, so I didn't have to make modifications, but overall it was working. I had one issue of trying to have the sensor collect position data very quickly, but it was too fast such that the computer could not handle the speeds because of how much information had to be printed to the screen. So how was I going to resolve this? Well, if you need to print the number 10, there are two characters, the 1 and the 0. But 10 in binary is 1010, which is four characters. So binary has more characters to represent the same number and is not as efficient for this task. And the regular 10 digit number system wasn't working either. So I converted everything to something called hexadecimal, which is base 16, or there are 16 digits rather than 10. And you'll learn this in various engineering disciplines like electrical or computer engineering. In hexadecimal, all the numbers up through nine are the same. But instead of the number 10, you'd use A, which is just one character, 11 is B, and this continues up to 15, which is F, then that's all the digits you have, and 16 would be 1, 0, and this would then continue. 
So you can use less symbols to represent the same numbers and allow the computer to do less work. And when you're printing thousands of characters, you can see how this can add up. And if you look at the calculators on certain computers, you'll notice hexadecimal as one option, and now you know why A through F are also there. So I had the computer print these to represent position numbers, and then I converted that back to the normal 10 digit number system in Excel so I could read the information in the plots. Then at the end of the summer, I had to make a poster board of everything I'd done with the project and present it at the intern showcase, where people can walk around and look at intern projects and ask questions about what they did. Now my job was in a cubicle, and most of the job was on the computer and looking at data, plotting data, or programming the Arduino. This might sound boring to you, but the internship was actually pretty fun, because I was constantly printing something on paper, then revising my code to make it more accurate. I had to do soldering for a bit, and if you don't know what that is, it's how you join electrical components to a circuit board. I was constantly analyzing computer hardware components, and the list goes on. Also, since this project was mostly programming and working with hardware, although I am an electrical engineer, a computer engineer could have easily qualified for this job as well. In fact, I would argue that they'd be more qualified because they do more programming than electrical engineers do. They learn about Arduinos and microcontrollers as well, and they have experience with circuits and electronics. Moving on to less technical things, I had meetings probably once per week where I mostly observed what else was going on at the company. I was the only intern working on this project, but I did have a manager as well as two mentors. This seems pretty common where you have your actual boss or manager, but then people designated to help you when you need it, and you usually will go to them for questions. The job was 9 to 5, although they did not really care when I came in as long as I worked the full 8 hours. The company did not really have a strict dress code either, so I got to wear jeans and a t-shirt most days. But this just depends on the company. My first job after college, I had to dress business casual. The internship paid just over $23 per hour, which really surprised me. I was expecting around $15 to $20 per hour max as an intern based on what my friends were getting. This hourly wage comes out to just over $48,000 per year, or just over $4,000 per month. After taxes, what I was really getting paid and what was going into my bank account was $2,938 per month though. I did another video on my salary as a full-time engineer, and I break down taxes, 401k, my expenses, and more, so you can see all that and I'll provide a link below if you want more detail. But the internship had no 401k, no health insurance or dental coverage or anything like that. The only thing coming out of my salary was taxes. How I got this job was as simple as it gets, I just applied online. It was not through any connections or a job fair or anything like that. And honestly, my resume was nothing special. I did have a high GPA of around a 3.8 major GPA, but I only had projects that I had done in classes, no extracurriculars or do-it-yourself projects I did in my spare time or anything like that. I said in another video that college GPA can matter in some situations, and this was kind of one. My boss said that they received nearly 100 applications for their department, so the first thing they did was throw out resumes where people had lower than a 3.0 GPA. No, you don't need a high GPA to get a job, but there were people out there who applied to that job and never had their application even seen by a person. It's very possible they found employment elsewhere, but there are cases where GPA can help you out. Also, as with almost every job I applied for, I was not fully qualified based on the requirements on the job description. They said they needed someone with knowledge in certain programming languages I did not know, they wanted people knowledgeable in some hardware I didn't know, and so on. And this is true for a lot of jobs you'll apply for. You won't feel qualified based on what they require, but that's okay. They throw a lot of things in that aren't actually required, or things they'll just teach you on the job. Very few people know everything that they want you to know for entry level jobs or internships. Also when I did the interview, which was a phone interview, I was asked a bunch of technical questions relative to the position I'd be working in. Most being about microcontrollers, computer hardware, and things of that nature. And I did not know like half of them. I remember being super nervous about this during the interview, and I often had to say things like, sorry, I just don't know that, but I still got the job. So remember, you don't have to be perfect on these interviews. And I'm going to end there. Overall, I really enjoyed the internship because I got to work on a cool project and had to figure things out myself, plus I learned so much. This, of course, does not represent all internships as I am just one person, but this is what I went through. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.